What's up guys, Matty here. In one of our previous videos, we saw stateless transformations in Kafka streams. Now, in this session, what we're going to learn is about stateless stream transformations. This means that we're going to transform the stream without changing the data of the stream. One of the things that we can do is we can remove elements from the stream, we can merge streams, and we can split streams into many branches. So welcome to Programming with Mati. So stream transformations are transformations that modify the stream without modifying the data that is inside the stream. With these operations, we can create new data streams, removing the undesired records, creating multiple streams and merge streams back together. And the three main operations that we're going to see are filter, split, and merge. So let's take a look at filter first. As we can see, the filter operation filters the elements based on a condition. So in this case, we're saying we don't want pentagons. So as you can see in the diagram, the pentagons are being filtered out and we keep the ones that are not pentagons. So the filter operation basically creates a new stream with all the elements that fulfill the given condition. It's a stateless operation. It doesn't trigger a repartition. It doesn't modify the elements. And you can use filter not if you want to negate the predicate. So if you want to filter the elements that don't fulfill the condition. And in this video, we're going to refer a lot to my previous video about the stateless operations tutorial in which we built a voice command parser and we used most of these stateless operations. So if we go back to the stateless operations tutorial, the voice command parser, we can see I've used the filter operation to get all the audio files that have a length greater than 10. And this is because we wanted to get rid of all the accidental audio files. The next operation that we can see is the split and branch. In this case, we can turn one stream into multiple streams based on different conditions. For example, here we are creating three different streams, one in which we want circles, a different one in which we want squares, and the final one in which we are using pentagons. So the split branch operation creates one or more streams with the elements that fulfill the conditions in each branch. The branches are mutually exclusive. Each element can be in multiple branches. So each element will be assigned to the first branch in which the condition is met. For example, here we see the circle meets this condition, so it will be assigned to the first branch and it will never be assigned to the second branch. Also, you can create a default branch to store all the elements that don't meet any condition in any of the branches. And the result of the split branch operation is always a map containing all the new streams. The keys for the map will be incremental integers, or it can be a string provided in the branch method. Previous to the version 2.8.0, a split didn't exist and you only had the branch method, which received an array of predicates and it returned an array of streams. This new version of the split branch operation is way more customizable and easier to use than the previous one. If we go back to the voice command parser tutorial, we can see how I use the split method here to create two branches, one for the recognized voice commands and one for the unrecognized. So in here we see one branch for the recognized ones, which had to fulfill this predicate and the second branch was a default branch. So, and, and we named this branch, this is the prefix that we added to the branch, and then we have the different suffixes. And we can access then those branches that are stored in this map, we can access them with the get operation, and then treat them as regular case streams. And in here we can see I used again the split operation, to separate commands that are in English from those that are in the different language. So these two examples 
are very good for you to take a look and understand how the branch operation works. All right, so now we have merge. In merge, what we do is the opposite of a splitting. We bring streams together. We combine these two streams and create a new one with all the elements of the preceding ones. As you might expect, this is a stateless operation, so there is no repartition and the data is not modified in any way. The only thing that we do is we create a new stream with data from the two different source streams. It's a very simple operation to understand and use as we used it in our tutorial. What we basically did is once we translated the commands that were in a different language, we merged together the commands in English with the ones translated and then we send them to the desired topic. As a bonus track, we have the peak operation. The peak operation is used to introduce what we call in functional programming a side effect, something that will modify the state of the application, but we don't want to modify the stream of the data. We just want to send data somewhere like a log or to a statistics or something like that. And we use this operation because we don't want to change the stream. We just want to get the a peak of the information and send it somewhere or log it somewhere. And this peak operation will return an unmodified stream. It's a stateless operation and it doesn't modify the stream, but it's very important that we don't modify the data that we are picking because we can do that and that could be harmful or at least not obvious to anyone looking at the application. So it's not recommended that we use this method to change the data anyway. If we want to transform the data, we have to use the map operation, not pick. All right, this was all for today. I hope this session will come handy whenever you need to refresh the stateless operations in Kafka streams. You can use this video and the one where we saw all the transformations like map, flat map. You can have just videos as reference of all the different stateless operations that you have. So I'll be seeing you in the next video. As always, smash the like button, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you later. Bye.